All right, now for uh, career-oriented career questions, questions. And, and a few miscellaneous questions as well. Sure. Let's start with Jonathan Davidson. Yeah. How did you become famous? Aw, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I ask because there are many great marimbas and percussionists out there that has yet to be noticed by publishers, companies, wondering the stories behind the success so far of the two of you. I feel like you won some competitions. Yeah. Well, yeah. first, I don't think I'm famous. <laughs> uh, well, I don't think that's the right way to go about music. Just, you know, how do you get famous? I mean, of course, again, yeah. there's the balance between the purely musical side and the, the career track minded of... Yeah. There is some business elements to it, especially as a 21st century musician, you gotta sure. be aware of it. But yeah, I think that should only be a supportive element to the, what the true goal of music is. Which yeah, is that you want to communicate. It's with people. It's about the human communication. Yeah, either composer, performer, audience, or just composer slash performer and audience. But it becomes a circle of dialogue. But yeah, and then the business side of you know how do you get out there. I mean, for me personally, should I just tell my story first? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. Like, my story was uh, I made the Goldberg version CDs. Yeah. And that came out surprisingly well. Like, when I, I for you might not know this, or some of the people out there might not know this, I, it's just pretty much me and the Boston Conservator Marimba pushed into some guy's basement. Yeah. Recorded it and, and printed it myself. Right, yeah. And, you know, I didn't think, like, the New York Times were gonna, was going to write a feature story yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah, sweet. So, <laughs> and then I didn't know that was going to be, like, my big stepping stone to get getting more other concerts yeah. and just getting, quote, unquote, noticed. That well, year. and it's interesting what you're noticed for, because uh, it, it's not all you do, you know, like you're noticed right. for doing that. And you know, if, if you know, you ask another marimba, so what do you know about Pius Chang? Oh, he's that guy that plays Goldberg. He's that guy <laughs> that writes that really romantic music. But you also, you have a 12 tone piece. I have some 12 tone pieces. And you play Gunther yeah. Schuller and, yeah. and you're a good timpanist. Yeah, and and there's, too. it's I mean, funny what you're, you're, you're noticed for is, is not yeah, exactly a representation of, of, of who you really are. I mean, first, the most I do out there right now is solo marimba. Right. Or like with orchestras or with you know, yeah. mostly marimba, but you know, I was trained at Curtis as an orchestral percussionist. Right. So and yeah. it's very my roots even on marimba is deeply rooted in the Philly school of orchestral playing. Like right. Al Nabel, Don Lancey, Michael Bookspan, those people yeah. are where my backgrounds came from. Yeah. But so after, anyways, let's get back to it. after the C D and then it just started getting more concerts and then I won the young concert artists yeah. Uh, uh, auditions in New York, and yeah. that gave me my Carnegie debut, management, Kennedy Center, and just kept rolling from there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think a good thing to think about is to put, I think it was Dane Richardson that first actually en like enforced this on me, like, hmm. like uh, to put yourself in the shoes of the presenter. Yeah. And then think about yourself as a musician or even as a product. What about you sells to other people? And then with that mindset, approach the right people. Hmm. Like I would not call like Daniel Bar Barenbaum. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a concerto game. Okay. <laughs> but you know, if you were say from like Brownville, Nebraska, that's where you're from. You went to Juilliard, for instance. And then when you graduated, you want to put on a show in your hometown. You contact the local concert series. There might only be one. Yeah. But what are the chances they're want, going to want to host someone that came from came back home? Yeah. And there's a guarantee there is going to be a big audience because you're a local. Sure. Yeah. I would definitely hire you if you were uh, as a presenter. So yeah. You're thinking that mindset. So so yeah, you stay with the artistic mindset and look for the people who are in the business so. mindset. And yeah. Yeah, I think you're you're very good also, um, like like about your colors book. Like we're talking about um, you know, what can you do to get that out there a little more? And right. there's all these things we thought of that <laughs> you haven't even bothered to do yet because you you know, you're like trapped in the artistic mindset which is such a pleasant place to be as an artist you know like we don't want to think right. about business much and sometimes we have to right. but um 
I mean, I'm trying to do it, but there's only 24 hours. Yeah, there's only 24 hours, and I, I feel the same way a lot. Like, it's like, oh, I could um, go be promoting this or that or, or doing something business-wise, but I, I don't know. I just want to go work on the next project. Like, the, the art is just much more exciting. Right. Always. I mean, and a lot of times, we talked about, there is the quote-unquote illusion of, once you get like the sponsorship and like the manager and the agents, yeah, that's just gonna all be like smooth sailing. It's not true. Yeah, you're still the driver of your own boat. I mean, right now I have a team of people working for me, but yeah, I still need. I, they're, they're they help me. They don't drive the car for me. Right, I still have to you know put on all the right gears. I mean, it might be easier now. I might you know. You know, just pass, pass it on contact and make my people, you know, follow it. But yeah, I still have to work at it. Yeah. But and the companies, they're there to help you. They're not there to, you know, set your life for you. It just puts you into the good team of contacts and people yeah. to make your job easier. Right. Not to do your job for you. Yeah, of course. Things. Yeah, and th there's just it's not like there's this system in place, and once you. I don't know, play the right thing or do the right performance, you're, you're now in and everything right. just just goes. You just, uh, you just have to kind of not stop, you know? And I think that's the thing that served me is uh, do a piece and then uh, if something happens, great. If nothing happens, fine. Do a commission. Mm -hmm. If something happens with it, great. Uh, yeah. If nothing does, uh, you don't really mind because I'm just, I'm kind of just mm -hmm. so excited about the next thing, you know? Uh, so so it just, it's a self driven uh, situation for yes. sure. Of course, there is also like the comfort repertoire you're comfort with, mm -hmm. but then there are a lot, of, especially these days, a lot of what attract the presenters are project based you know, projects. So, like, yeah. I have a one year project of, you know, Marimba and uh, Merdum Dum, for instance. Huh. Yeah. And then I go find the right presenters and work on that for about a year and then put them yeah. aside or. Like the Silk Road project, they don't, they're, they're not yeah. going on the road, you know, 30, 365 days a year. Right, they, they did it, it and yeah, they, they, they moved on, yeah. No, they didn't actually move on, they're still no? doing it, but, you know, yeah. but only for like, uh, uh, maybe a month or two, maybe three a okay. year. But then there's Yo-Yo Ma, so. Right. It's a different story. Yeah, there. a busy dude, yeah, yeah. of course. Hmm. So, yeah. project based, that could be good, but again, it's more about not just thinking, like, why are people not booking me? I need a manager. No, it's not like that. Right. Yeah, just don't think that way. You know, d d don't think, uh, why aren't, you know, like, I don't know, d don't keep pounding the sponsor's door, you know, yeah. like, just <laughs> just keep playing and... Um, just keep playing, yeah. Just, yeah, just, yeah. I mean, just keep playing, just keep writing, whatever it is you do. Yeah, and I, I, the music kind of guide you. Yeah, I, I feel like what you do, the... The, the career will kind of find you and if it goes the other way around then it's not right you know like you should already be doing it yeah. um, and, and then uh, it'll yes. find you you yeah. know how do you find you know the, your, your career path or like the, how do you conceptualize the business part of mm -hmm. music while keeping your true musical self you know center like true to yeah. yourself yeah of course I think that's important yeah, I never want to turn into the guy who is, has done so <laughs> many gigs that they just roll into the gig and there's no there's no passion, there's no anything. It's just in and out and uh, paycheck, like, paycheck and go, and it just seems unhappy. It just seems unfulfilling. Well, that's just us though. Give it took twenty years with my change. Oh, that's our right. Lives. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Again, we'll like, none of these are absolutes. We're just we we are constantly involving. So. You're right. We're gonna yeah. look back at this what we're saying in a year and be like, what? Very, we're very, very well true. Yeah. We're, we're Same idiots. with the composition. <laughs> I look at what I wrote like ten years ago. This is stupid. This is stupid. I know. I, know right? I thought it was the greatest thing when I was thirteen. <laughs> I know, man. That was so cool when I was thirteen. Yeah, exactly. Let's let's move on to yeah. Carlos's question here. All right. Um, with so many great marimbas that has that have come out of the Boston Conservatory, what I've noticed that each person has their own unique voice. Not everyone plays the same, which is a great thing. Could you both talk about how you both came to develop your own voice, sound, and how other marimbas could find their own unique voice? So this is really a question for mother. Yeah, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> Hi, Nancy. Answer this. Answer this question for Carlos if you can in the comments below or however you wish to. So, but but he's right. I mean, how has she done that? You know, there's been a bunch of them. 
and a bunch of us that have just boom, 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 boom. You know, there's been this long running chronology. Yeah. Uh, Nana, Naoko, yeah. Anna Jolie, and, and we're all very different. Yeah. And, and Erico, and you, Erico, and, 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 and Humito. And the, I feel like the next round is loaded up. Yeah. You know, like is it Rachel? <laughs> Rachel like and Raw and Setsuko. And, you, yeah. yeah, it doesn't stop. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, the next the next bunch are loaded up, and they're gonna appear too. I think for me the coolest thing about Nancy was like she never made us do anything. There was like, never, never a set yeah, list. agenda. There was never a set list. Yeah, yeah. like she just she just kind of observes and then puts us in the right direction and just kind of guides. You know, like oh yeah. you're going yeah try that. Yeah. Kind of like Nadia Boulanger, like all her students. You know, yeah, are completely different, but completely she just kind of guides them. Yeah, it's not about like setting play this this way and right. there, go there it's about like boop, boop. which would be that, and that'd be it's, it's to her credit as a teacher because that would be a much easier way to teach like if I just told my students okay all you're going to play is all the music yeah. I've played yeah. uh, but I mean both of us we were taking pieces that we had written to her that she's never seen and you know she can just tell us what to do and I mean it's difficult it's hard teaching a piece that you've never heard and you're hearing for the first time and um the problems that are in it, uh, you're hearing as the piece, and you have to distinguish <laughs> <laughs> what, what was a problem versus what was was written there. And you, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you didn't get to hear it correct the first time, so it's, it's to her credit. <laughs> I mean, of uh, course, I I played like neurobiology and lessons for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and if, I, I haven't yeah. performed it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course, you want to take advantage of what your teacher does well. Right. Obviously, you know. Yeah, you know, I think coolest thing about Nancy and actually the Boston Conservatory for me because I did my artist diploma there. Yeah. I don't have a master so my program was pretty much you plan your own curriculum. Right. Whether there was lessons, film scoring, marimba ensemble, a lot of film scoring. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and my other teachers there were really uh, just yeah. just very open, like like Keith Alea was very open, Sam was very open and John Grimes? Very open and just yeah, just just in, in just intelligent musicians and yeah, I mean, so I I think that's how and, how that happened. Um, and you know what else? There like Pat and Sal are still there too. I right, mean, those are incredible musicians. As well. Yeah, incredible musicians. And Sal and Pat, I don't know. Like Pat is more buddy I think. and Sal. I look at him. And, <laughs> yeah, the God, God of timpani, <laughs> the, the timpanist. Yeah. Um, Carlos also asked, where's the instrument headed, and what would we like to see more of and less of? I guess maybe as far as repertoire or right. things like that? Yeah. I don't know, I think it's just going to be continually growing really, at a really rapid pace. Yeah. Because we, we're looking at, the last I spoke with Bob Van Sice, he, he, he told me, you know, players back in his time, at his prime, like around then, yeah. could not play as well as you know, the the thirty year olds like us around that. Yeah. And then I'm observing my students like the seventeen, eighteen year olds. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't play like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's just gonna continue growing, I think. Yeah. I had I had a master class when I was like maybe a, a freshman in undergrad, um, Makoto Nakura. Yeah. Uh, he it, was my first master class. Was he he was ever. he might have been one of my earlier ones for yeah. sure. Which I loved and I love his yeah. playing. He's one of my favorite Marimbas for sure. But I played Mexican dances for him, right. and on one hand he was like very complimentary. He's like, "Oh, you have you have very good hands, you you know." But I wasn't very mature, right. so his his uh, you know his critique involved a lot of cerebral things and a lot of you know choices. You right. know, like you talk about you know think about what you're doing. Uh, but that was something he said. He's like Mexican dances. You're so young to be playing this. <laughs> and I, and I, I don't mean to say that's cool about me, but like that is the norm. Like it's right. just exponentially getting like. Uh, you know, people doing younger and younger and younger, playing harder and harder. Um, so I think you're right. It's like it, it's taking off, going further. And it's an interesting concept. This is something my dad told me because my dad is uh, my dad's an athlete. He's a mathematician, but he's also he's, he played basketball for LSU. He's like Indiana Jones. He, he's like awesome. Yeah. What, what can I say? He's rad. Um, but um, he, he said that you know the fastest mile time anyone could run. I'm not sure how long ago this was, but it was six minutes, and that was like the t the fastest. Right. And by today's standard, that's very slow, um, <laughs> which we all you all probably know. It's like pretty slow. But once someone beat six minutes, right. everyone did, you know. And then the the bar went to four minutes. Right. And once someone did four minutes, 
literally like everyone did the next day. So it's very, <laughs> it's very like conceptual, like what's possible right. and, and, and what you can do. And, you know, it's like, you know, some of your pieces, they seem so difficult, but then as soon as someone plays them, it's like everyone can play them. It's like, oh, okay, that's possible. I just didn't know. And all it took was, oh, I needed to know that's possible. And now I can do it. Actually, that's a good observation, and this could be like a YouTube user <laughs> answer. For instance, I don't know, it could be just me, like when I play my own pieces, nobody wants to play it. Mm. But then when other people play it, probably better than me, like Erico or you. Sure, and yeah. I, and then, and then right after that first performance, I'm getting like, uh, 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 I want to get that piece. <laughs> yeah, like every Like, is it me? Like, do I play my pieces that badly? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's badly. I think it's, you know, I think, you know, I don't yeah. know. I, I don't know. know. I'm don't curious. Know. If you have answers, comment. Yeah, yeah, please. This is, I'm yeah, curious. yeah, this has been fun. So keep talking to us. Yeah. We like this. Um, uh, is there anything you want to see less of or more of? No, I like where we're going. I like variety. It's it's weird because even when I run into uh, pieces of music that I, I I don't particularly like, I, I find solace in the fact that um oh I'll, I'll probably like that later or I, I I probably would have liked that a long time ago. And just the fact that other people like it and are excited about it, yeah. um, I, I I get I get excited about that. You know, thinking more, again uh, again same with Nancy's project like more intermediate more of a. Yeah, Magic. that would be good. Yeah, and insert ad for my book colors. Here. Colors, yeah. <laughs> we could just do a big picture of it right yeah, now. Like, right yeah, now. I gotta lie around. But <laughs> um, <laughs> what were we career, were we in career or miscellaneous? Uh, I guess career wise, I think we're. Nice. I think yeah. we're done. Um, like miscellaneous questions. When are we gonna start putting out some duets? Oh. Soon. Soon. <laughs> As soon as you start practicing with a metronome. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I, I don't have a metronome. As soon as your time isn't all over the place. Metronome always tells me I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't like that. Yeah, the metronome must be wrong. Yeah, I don't like being know. told I'm wrong. Yeah, that's uncomfortable. I don't like anything unpleasant. I don't like being criticized, especially yeah. by a machine. So. And actually, yeah. when we've played together, it's it's it works well. Yeah. And it's fine. And, yeah. Soon, yeah. Soon, yeah. I don't like being in West Virginia, and you're we're on we're on the coast now. So, um, uh, what kinds of mallets do I use? And that's uh, for me. Uh, oh, I use a lot of mm-hmm. Kiko Abe mallets yeah. and uh, a lot of the Fick Firth mallets, but those are custom made, so yeah, I'm not sure if you can get them. <laughs> and some some of the French companies, uh, uh, Pierre Resta's Jean Chafois series. Jean Chafois series, yeah. yeah. So it's usually a combination of these three types of mallets. Yeah. 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 Uh, Vic Firth endorser, uh, Promark endorser. <laughs> big, big point of contention for us. Lots of <laughs> fights, fights in the car and stuff. Yeah. I think that's all of our questions. Yeah. Thanks, well, you guys. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, comment if you have more questions, I'd say. Right? Yeah, I think so. And uh, if this if this was a good idea, let us know because maybe we'll next time we see each other yeah. or next time you bring an artist do the same thing or yeah something. next time you have me over to university yeah. which has not happened yet. Not happened just yet. so you you remember i'm just reminding you like when am i coming when over? are you coming just come just show up <laughs> it'll be good <laughs> all right facebook and youtube right. thanks bye bye <laughs>